Welcome to episode 376, a digital vehicle inspection roundtable. DVI is here to stay. Don't ignore this important tool. Here's a preview. There, and there's vision involved, right? You're, you're, you're trying to see the, the future. And I tell people all the time, my crystal ball is as broken as yours. Right? We all have them, but they're cracked. Let's be honest, right? Because we yeah, all see the future. It's a hazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yours, yeah. yours might be hazy. Mine's been dropped like a couple crystal. times. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hi, Carm Capriato here, and in just a bit, we'll welcome back Remarkable Results Radio vets Chris Clodier, John Burkhauser, and Pete Rudloff in a first-ever DVI roundtable discussion here on the Aftermarket's Premier Talk Radio. A thanks to Federal Mogul Motor Parts for their support of this very powerful content library. So consider, when you need to search for parts, get the latest technical updates, or sign up for their Garage Rewards and Tech Loyalty Program to earn swag, go to fmmotorparts.com. Here's a shout out to new Facebook friends, Thomas Drisdale, Michael Barrett, and Vincent Bauer, and new LinkedIn connections, Matt Thorlson and Robert Orr. Are you in touch with our remarkable community? Well, get inside our ecosystem at remarkableresults.biz slash social. The rise of DVI is undeniable. It may be 10% of today's shops, but its importance is and will be like a smartphone. Very few today don't have one. I've always said that DVI will be as necessary as a two-post lift in each bay. Now, in this episode, an unprecedented roundtable with Chris Clodier of Golden Rule Auto Care and Autotex.me, John Burkhauser of Bolt-On Technology, and Pete Rudloff of Pete's Garage and FlexCheck Auto. A great discussion as they illuminate the importance of DVI to our industry service professionals and for everyday vehicle owners. Now, since more customers want to be in control, DVI will increase the transparency with what's going on with their vehicle. DVI brings the vehicle in the bay to their home or office. This team says the problem with adoption rates to DVI is the unwillingness to change, the fear factor in battling priorities, such as everyday fire drills. They say if you adopt early, you gain a competitive advantage, and soon customers will demand this. Become the leader in your market. A very interesting discussion that I believe you'll find enlightening and just may change your plans for 2019. Find my guests' bios and the show's talking points, links to their companies, and their previous episodes at remarkableresults.biz slash E376. Now listen to the DVI Roundtable, or maybe it's a square table, recorded at ASAPA's Super Saturday. Hey, warm welcome to my roundtable team. Here we're going to talk about digital vehicle inspections. And, and please, no, don't, don't, don't tune out. This is going to be so good because when you find out who's on the panel, you're going to say, ooh, this is going to be fun. It's Chris Clodier from Autotex.me. Hi, Hello, Chris. Carm. How are you? John Burkhauser from Bolt On. Hey, Carm, the table's not round. That's a good point. Um... Okay, our square table here with our <laughs> round guys. Hmm. And then Pete Rodloff from FlexCheck. Hey, guys, how's it going? Great, Pete. Um, okay, guys, uh, knowing that I was going to be at Super Saturday and I saw all your names uh, on the list, not only from, you know, you're teaching and you're doing things, but you have booths, I said, wow, sparks need to fly. We need to, no, I'm only kidding. You guys all know each other so well. You all have competitive products. And, you know, there's a lot of room in the industry for everybody. And the, the objective here, and we've been talking about DVI on the show ad nauseum for, you know, really tough in the last year, strong in the last year. But in the early days, we we're all saying, wow, this is really cool. This is really neat. There's a lot of early adopters out there. But now we're in this, I think, momentum moment where we're really we're building and building and, and you're all coming out with new generations of, of code and you're, you're learning from your customers. And so our objective in this meeting is to get the people that are on the fence uh, that are that are kind of teetering on, uh, on the fa- to, to move move our industry forward quicker, better, faster than ever before. So, what challenges, guys? Let's let's just, just have a discussion. Do you see in the industry for the adoption rate? If you don't mind, I mean, one of the things I like to explain to people is why the way I see the shops right now they're struggling. They're treading water basically, and they just have their mouth and nose out of the water, and they're just struggling. 
And what happens because they're in that situation is that they can't look around for help and they can't look around and see where they can go with this. But we have to tell them that we have a life pole for them. We have something we can reach out, and that's the digital inspection. You need to just pop your head up just long enough so that we can show you the benefits it's going to have for your shop, your customers, and everybody. Okay, challenges. Struggling shop. So many things come to my mind. Poor leader. Uh, margins. Labor rates. Real good financials. Um, Fear. Fear. I mean, it, it, the point of it is DVI is not the answer to a lot of those problems. Mm-hmm. It's not – if you're saying that's the lifeline for that, I may challenge that thought. So, so, so the reason DVI is so important is going to increase the transparency of what vehicle owners are seeing when it comes to what's going on in the state health of their car. We live in a technology-driven society where people want to be in charge of what's going on in their lives. So you know, people want to be – feel that they're in control of what's going on with their car. The old way of doing business was to call somebody up on the phone, give them a list of bullet points. Here's what's going on in your car. You know, your brakes are shot. Your ball joints got play. You're due for a transmission service, and your car needs a tune-up. It's 2700 bucks. Do you want it? Do you not want it? And then stop. Every shop owner has been any training has been told, you stop. You don't say anything. The first person that says something loses. Well, with DVI, there doesn't have to be any losers. So everybody can win because the vehicle owner has the time to research through the report that they have that hopefully has been done well by the shop, covered all the bases of the car. They know the true health condition of the car. They're going to make better decision on fixing their car. And fixing the car is always a good decision. Bottom line, fixing the car is almost always the right choice. But usually when I hear struggling shops, they say, i got to have car count. you got to maximize your cars that come in. That's otherwise, right. car count doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, good. that's the thing, because you got to realize with every vehicle you come in, there's a write-up, there's a pull-up, put it on a lift, pull it apart, do this, do it. How many times you got to do that? How It's going to wear your people out. It's going to wear your customers out. So if we can get the most from the car, just as was said, every vehicle and be able to share that with the customer, educate the customer, that's going to make the difference. Maximize every car every time. Yeah, and I want to go back to just the initial challenge of, of what we're talking about, digital inspection. And you said that everybody needs to kind of get off the fence. So I, I want to make an opening statement of absolutely. So digital inspection, it's not going away. It's like the cell phone. You know the flip phone when they first come on and people are like, I'm, not, I'm never going to get a cell phone. And now everybody has one. So no, everybody needs one. Well, everybody has well, right. not a flip phone. Let's make it clear. Everybody has a, 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 smartphone. a, a smartphone now, yes. right? There's still very few people who have a flip phone. So, and I, I think you guys would agree. There's probably still only 10% market penetration. That's taken into consideration tire shops, auto repair shops, right? So the penetration is still very, very low in a product that it's going to be the norm. It should be the norm. It is the norm. There was a time when if you were an early adopter and it wasn't integrated with your shop management system and, and it had some technical deep, you know, default or technical problems that it was a little bit harder to adopt. But now there's, there's really no excuse, right? Other than the excuses we'll talk about, there's really none because it's, it's pretty much becoming the standard quo. It's not going away. It's like the internet. It's not going away. It's like Google. It's not going away. Digital inspections should be here and they should be here to stay. So whether you're a leader, and, and we can talk once again about the challenges, whether it's leadership challenge, whether it's ARO, whether it's pictures, whether we, we can get all those. I just want to make that statement of let, let's stop ignoring that this needs to happen and, and let's agree that, look, all three of us will agree. You, you need to get on board. It's, it's not an option anymore. It should just be a choice now. Who am I going to use? And a, what right. tool am I going to use? It's right? such a great point. On, on, on a show probably within the last six months, I said what I've learned from all of you is that uh, DVI is as important as having two-post lift in a bay. Sure. Your 916 wrench, the DVI is just as important as having just, a it's a just wrench. As it's, important. it's a tool to help with transparency. And, um, absolutely. 100%. It, so, so I love what you just said, transparency. The image of our industry can have a profound change with DVI. Profound. Yeah, I mean, think about it. The car disappears into a shop. You're not allowed to go back there and see it. They take it apart. They come out and tell you all these things. Now we can basically take the car to them. We can send it to them via text, whatever method we want. And think about the power of walking a customer out underneath the bay that they're, not, they're comfortable with it and you show it to them. Don't you generally sell what you're showing? Well, the digital inspection now brings that customer sitting in the office or at home to underneath their car. They can understand why. 
we need to replace this, why the service is due. And that, I think, is the key part. I'm talking with Jonathan Jacelli, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. So, Jonathan, how does a service professional get the guru on the go van to their shop? There's a couple ways. We do what we call cold calls, where we go around and just visit shops based on uh, geographics. And there's also times where we team up with outside sales reps from other parts distributors and visit the shops on that basis. So I love this. You pull into a shop uh, on a cold call, they see the van, and they're probably excited to see you. Yeah. I've had a couple shops where they've actually have already heard of the gurus via Facebook or social media. So when I show up, they've already been signed up and taken online classes, and now that the van's there, it's really easy to book a lunch and learn. So you're really an extension of the Garage Guru Training Centers. Yes, absolutely. So you're all done with your lunch and learn. You spend 45 minutes to an hour. Probably that's all you can really get from a busy, busy shop. What are the technicians saying about your shop visit? Oh, they love it. They thank me, you know, every second I'm walking out the door and just can't wait for me to come back again. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. Uh, guys, I think about your, your jobs of really getting the uh, industry to accept your products and or the philosophy of digital vehicle inspections. But what challenges? Each of you, I'd love to respond. What are the challenges you see when someone says, no, 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 I don't need this right now? Is it just that it's not time? The tech is too hard. My people won't accept it. What, what, what are the most naysays right now? Change. Oh. You, I had that little session with you recently where I talked about how hard change is. Yeah. I think that's the first key. Because even if they adopt the software, if they adopt the inspection, they got to keep pushing that change for a period of time for it to become a habit. So I see change as being part of it. Yeah, I'd say we, we, we're a trade that traditionally is afraid of technology. We always have been. You know, when we switched from carbureted cars to fuel injected cars, you know, most guys were scared to death of these fancy newfangled computer things no way that they're going to last right so kind of same thing to what you know, chris is saying that, you know, that we're always afraid of the new technology coming out ados systems are something that are scaring a lot of technicians right now and i think the way we conquer that fear which is probably the biggest factor for shop owners not implementing a dvi is just by education by showing them that hey this isn't really that scary it's not difficult. It's going to increase your average repair order. It's going to make your technicians more efficient. Um, your customers are going to trust you more. Show them through education the benefits of it. And that's how we knock down that fear. Yeah, so me and Peter as shop owners, it's, it's about battling priorities, right? And I agree, change has a lot to do with it. And it's leadership. So at a leadership level, you have 8 million things pressing. What's important what needs to be done right now? What fire do I need to be put out? And I hear this all the time. You guys hear it all the time, right? I don't have time, right? Because right. it's all the battling priorities. I'm about to fire a tech or I don't have a tech that's producing. I need hiring somebody on the counter. My marketing machine's not working. I just bought a website, you know, whatever. Numerous, numerous things, right? right? So it's, it's, that, it's the importance of that priority, right? And where that priority lays in their battling priorities. Has that digital piece become a priority? And as soon as they bring it into the base, because they know when they bring in change to their people, their people are going to resist. So where are you going to take that battle, right? Are, are you going to take it to something that maybe is a little easier and bring on some product that's going to help drive lead generation that doesn't affect your current operation? So if I bring in some lead generation tool or you know, buy some website, that doesn't affect my current operation. As soon as I bring in some sort of digital inspection or digital piece that is now changing Major impact on Major it. impact, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and as a leader, we have to be careful about what kind of impacts we throw in front of our people. Because we threw too much in front of them, then, then walls start to crumble. Okay. I love what you, I love what you just said. Um, and should every shop owner say, it's, it's time where people start thinking about next year, 2019. What am I going to do? What are my plans for my business for next year? I've done CRM. I've done some SMS stuff. But really, I, I've, got to, I've got to start talking to my people now. We are going to go 
to a digital vehicle inspection. I want to tell you all this. Here's the benefits. Here's all the great reasons. This is, and we're going to transform our company. It's going to be interesting. And we're going to upend how we do things. I just don't want to throw it on them. I want to start saying 2019 is our year. Is, is that a way to think this through? Uh, uh, yes, a, you should, idea. right? Yeah. As, as leaders, we should be laying down those battle plans for the future. And I would say 2019, I'd say 2020, I'd say 2021. I mean, this world is going to change very quickly. I, I, in my presentation today, I like this. Uh, uh, I've, and I just discovered this recently. IVR. I've known IVR, interactive voice response. It's been around for a while. We've been talking to Alexa for a while and Cortana and all these. And a couple weeks ago, as my kids are saying, hey, Alexa, play this song, play this song, play this song, I'm like, I'm going to ask Alexa, hey, Alexa, what's the best auto repair shop in my area? And I wasn't one of those auto repair shops because Alexa uses Bing. Now think, our whole generation of kids is using Alexa, and they're now using IVR, and they're using Cortana, and they're using voice because voice is more natural than the keyboard. Think about the effects of four, five, six years from now. So we're looking at next year, absolutely. We should have a plan to, to take and put in place what's here now, which is digital inspections. That's what I'm saying. I think we can all agree there's no reason why you should not have a digital inspection. There's not a good one. Uh, we can go to the, uh, well, I, I can write it down faster. I said, sure, okay, I'm going to do voice to text real quick, and then you write it down, and we're about the same speed. Now, I'm going to take a picture, you draw the picture. I win, right? I win with the Every digital time. inspection. <laughs> Every time. You can't draw a picture fast enough. So, yes, I like laying down those plans and saying, here's technology that's already here that exists, that, that you can talk to multiple vendors out here at ASC, ASAPA, and, and you have the software where we can integrate, make it work, and, and you can start with this in 2019 for sure. I like your plan. I know I went a little bit further out, like 2022. Well, you, uh, well, I think there are, let's put it this way, the, t the 2019 idea are the guys that have been doing some research. I mean, think about it. Yep. You're, all, you're all at certain sales cycles with, with many of your prospects. And, and maybe you just need to you take a bunch of them and say, uh, you're doing this, by the way, hi, Bobby, you're doing this in 2019. I just want to let you know. And, and if you get a fight, then you say, all right, we're going to do it in quarter four of 2019. You get a bigger fight, then we're going to do it in Q1 of 2019. The point of it is that maybe we as an industry need to go out and say, like you said, it's here, it's now, it's going to happen, and you'll be square and way out if you don't bring it in, um, adopt it, adapt it. And maybe our job in the industry is to timeline it. So my point with the whole IVR thing is, is the future is what we don't even know what the future is, right? And, and we're all about Google and, and Bing is actually what drives Cortana and, and, and Alexa. So that's a couple years out, right? That we, so we need to be focused on now, and we can. So you absolutely should be taking the digital inspection, laying it down with your people, laying down the expectations as a leader and saying, yeah, it's 2019. Look, I'll give you six months to adopt this. I want five inspections a week from each person, right? And even though you're running 15, 20 cars per tech, that's well, fine. You know, that's a great idea. Uh, right? you know, and then a, a random draw. And mm -hmm. listen, we, we've got the software. Let's not push ourselves too far to implement 100%. You can. Uh, depends on what kind of leader. You can yeah. slowly turn up the heat or you can push it all over. It works. It just depends on your leadership style, right? And I might actually say, let's step back a little bit further. And what I mean is, like, when you're considering the inspections, Get your team involved when making those with decisions that. yes. because they buy into it and everyone's going to be part of that solution. Everyone's going to buy into it. So you're going to have less pushback because, hey, you know what? They gave us a chance to decide which inspection works for us. Let everybody see the demos. Yeah. It's important to have uh, employee feedback and buy in on the inspection process of how it's going to be done. You need to have a plan. Here's how my shop does an inspection because every every DVI shop, every shop that's doing regular inspection without DVI, their plan is different. Um, so DVI a lot of times allows you to kind of streamline and structure how each inspection gets done on every car that comes in the shop. But they can start doing that on even on paper, start structuring and saying, hey, we're going to do this, check this, check this, check. And that preps someone to be ready to dive into the ADI. And they can kick the tires. Any, any one of us as vendors can, can kick the tires, right? Sure. I mean, we, I think there's a lot of product parity between them. I mean, 
all DVRs are not created equal, but there's a lot of similarities, right? You can take pictures, you can mark them up, you can take your notes, your, get your text out to go kick the tires in 2018, come out to ASAPA or Early Vision and, and start having them look at these products or have them look at them all right. You don't have to go to a show. They can go right now and go online and get a demo from any one of us and, and we'll give you a demo on the weekend at night. You know, it, it, it's so true. If you're trying to recruit team members into a, a major tech tech change in your in your company, I don't care what company, and they can go home and dream on it and say, our business will change. I love this thing. This tablet thing is a cool idea. The pictures, the customer intimacy, you know, and wow, we, we really move our company into the next level. This is good for us. I know we're going to be better and more profitable and all the all these good things and you give someone a chance to dream and think on those ideas instead of coming in and saying hi i've selected a dvi company we're in training next in, in the next two weeks and we will be in full adoption in 30 days it's like ah and so when they're part of the timeline like you guys said i i i think maybe that's one of the problems i mean as you're intimate with your prospects and with your integrations. What are the biggest challenges that are going on in, in integration? Is it that there is, is, is the timeline too tight and there's no buy-in? Potentially, right? Potentially. And, and it's, every shop's different, right, it, when it comes to how they train and, and whether they give their people time for consumption. Because remember, the shop owners got battling priorities, but then all the people in the shop have battling priorities. This is... I like your plan of laying it down. I'm a planner. I gave my guys all 2018 to, to switch over to digital work orders because I knew it was going to be a big change. We gave six months to switch over to digital inspections that we switched over you know, years ago, right? I, I said, just like you said, we don't have a choice. This is what we're going to do, but I'll take input on how we're going to do it, right? I, I'll take feedback because ultimately this is the direction we're going to go, right? I like to give my guys training time. I like to give them time to understand and consume. Because I understand during the day they have their own priorities, which is deal with the cu- I'm yelling at them to deal with the customer and sell a ticket, and now you're expecting me to learn a digital inspection, and you know, you're already yelling at me because I don't produce enough hours on this, and now you're yelling at me to, to change my process. So I'm all about training your, your people if, if the leader allows for that training. Right. I don't need another disruptor yeah, in my know. business. <laughs> there you go. So the big thing that's going to make the change is management. You're exactly right with that because I think that that's where it comes from. Hey, you want to do this and they walk away and expect results. It's not going to happen. So management has to understand that when they're looking for these things, they have to think about how they're going to give them to the customers, how they're going to give it to their their people out in the shop. And they have to develop a plan. And that, again, is leadership. You know, I know there's been times where things have been just dropped on me and other people I work with, and we just push back. But if you let us be part of it, it's going to make a difference. Right. And then you measure those KPIs, right? Another thing, the, the what is it called, the soup and poop or the, the, the pump and dump or whatever, and, and that's what leaders do, right? They'll, they'll just drop stuff on their people and then they go away. Here, here it is. F- fix it. W- what are your KPIs? Y- you know, how, we t- t- images. How many images do you expect on that DVI? Because a DVI is great when it's words, but not really so great because you might as well be speaking because you're probably able to present that. So are you putting videos? Are you acquiring videos? Are you acquiring words? Are you acquiring marked up images? So you gotta have some sort of expectations you're setting on this digital inspection, because we all hear this. Well, it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't help my ARO. <laughs> okay, what did you do? Well, let me look at your inspection. Let me look at your process. Let me look at, and what kind of KPIs are you trying to hold against your team to hold them accountable to make sure that it is successful when you do deliver that. Walk the owner down the road. That was that was my takeaway from this. And and I and I I'm going to ask you something that you you may not want to share, but when I think about the close that we, when you get somebody to say yes and you're you're a closing moment and the owner says, "So, tell me about implementation and training. Uh, how are you going to walk us down the road?" Is that a real critical step here? Absolutely, it's a critical step. So the key to having a successful DVI implementation is the owner or shop administrator being willing to put the time in to build the templates that the shop's going to use. 
um, you know, ideally templates that fit that shop's philosophy. Every every repair shop has a different philosophy, so they're going to do their checks different than you know their competitors down the street. And, you know, for good or bad, it, you know, doesn't matter. They're going to be different, and they need to make sure that the system that they use matches their core shop philosophy. If it doesn't match their core shop philosophy, then they're probably going to break their shop because your your shop every shop has its identity. If you don't use your shop's identity as part of your inspection process, then you're, you're going to break your shop. I think John's a good one to answer that. I mean, they've got a whole university. So how important is training? Well, it's very, it's very important. What we do is we set up with our customers, we get them installed, and we actually work hand-in-hand hand with them remotely to get them up and running. We don't want to get in deeply at first just for the fact that um, there's just so much to learn. I don't want you to be trying to figure your way around a tablet when you don't even know how to use a tablet, and I'm trying to show you something more advanced. And then we take them up to the next level, which is going to be a webinar where I generally interact with them. And then we give our customers the chance to come to the university, to Baltimore University. And that's for people that have been using it for a year or so. And the reason being behind that is because there's such a big, and I'm sure both your products are the same, that there's a lot behind it. And they pick that 10% that makes them successful, and they get narrow-minded. So the university comes along to open that view, to let them see more about what they can do, how they can use those little tweaks that we offer to make even more on a repair order. And it's amazing when um, people walk out of that university, some of them are just baffled. They don't know where to start, and some of them panic. And we just try, and the the next key piece, and I think both you guys will agree, is that once you do get the training out there, is checking back in and making sure, like the KPIs and things of that sort, making sure that they're still committed to that change. If not, you've got a poor installation and someone not talking too happy about it. Right. Correct. And, and that, that was one thing I, I, I was thinking about is a checkbox, the feature-driven, um, all of the features that you have in your software. And we are they? Them, we call them in our, our company stickers. Stickers? Okay, cool. All right, stickers. <laughs> and so are you tracking uh, the, 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 the level of usage from all the features that are going on from inside the product? the stickers the pro- that you have? From all the stickers. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. And it shows you, and it, it drives a lot of your innovation, right? Where you need to focus, where you don't need to focus, right? So, so monitoring everything is 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 a very good marketing thing, because we don't we know that this digital stuff is still fairly new in this industry, right? And what's being created in the digital back office and all the digital products. There's other industries that are a lot more progressed than us, but this one, we're still kind of feeling it out. So I don't think it's 100% baked yet. Uh, right. are, you, are you feeling it out? I mean, the technology is there. The Correct. smarts are there. The AI is there. But are we feeling it out because the adoption rate is so slow? Well, because we don't fully know what our consumers, which is a shop owner, we don't fully know exactly what they want because, like you said, we only got 10% saturation right now. Correct. So we're still figuring out what our clients really need. We think we know. You know, I, I think I got a pretty good handle on it because I have a repair shop, but the fact is, is my repair shop isn't the same as every other repair shop in America. You, you get, you, wait, get, we were talking about this. We we're like, hey, Peter, welcome to the club. Now that you're here, right, how many feature requests do you get a day? Right. Probably a 1,000, right? I mean, it's easy to get... We all fix cars, but we all do it a little bit differently. And when you have 200,000 shop owners that do it a little bit differently, that's a lot of little changes that potentially come in, right? You know, that is such a great point. You know, how do you pick as a, as a company? Uh, you throw them up on the wall. How do you pick the next features? Well, well, so you just said, right? So you're monitoring what's really successful in the things that you put out there, and then you continue to put more time towards those. We put out some things that we think, oh, man, this feature is going to kill it. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going to love it. And you put it out, and, like, nobody uses and it. it goes flat yeah, on yeah. Right. yeah, and you're like, well, that was wasted. But in your mind, one you guy loved great. it. Yeah. There's only yeah. one, the, yeah. the one guy who asked. Yeah. We thought it was really cool. And, and I, think, I think that comes down to our automotive heritage roots, really, because, like, when you have an auto repair shop, you know, there's certain clients that are going to work great with your auto repair shop, but there's other clients that are going to be horrible at your shop. But at another repair shop, they're they a, they're a yeah. clients. They're, yeah. they're, you know, they're, they're, they're like, I, oh, they love these guys. They're great. Um, I think it's the same with, you know, with almost any company that's in this industry where you know, some, some people fit here and some people fit here. So with the diversity that we have with shop owners and the diversity that we have with DVI companies, I think it's really just a matter of finding the right 
the right fit for the needs and you know monitoring what, what's working for our clients, monitor what's working for your clients, and then making sure we're enhancing on what we see our clients' needs are. So. There, and there's vision involved, right? You're, you're, you're trying to see the, the future. And I tell people all the time, my crystal ball is as broken as yours. Right? We all have them, but they're cracked. Let's be honest, right? Because we yeah, all see the future. It's a little hazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yours might be hazy. Mine's been dropped like a couple times. The ball has glaucoma. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And if you lived in Colorado, you could sell them. No, just not even going to go there. That would be true. <laughs> so, as, as guys who are leading the charge for DVI, uh, you know, give me so a final. Beneficial. So, yeah, let's just, uh, again, let's go back to, I think, one of my opening things about being on the fence. Uh, let's, let's give a succinct, let's go around the room, a succinct line. It's not going away. I love what you said earlier, Chris, but uh, here I am. I'm a shop owner. Convince me. I, it, I'm going to say the gap that you create. So there's a book out there, and I forget who wrote it. Um, same guy, I think, wrote uh, Purple, uh, Purple Cows, I think. Oh, 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 oh. oh. But it's called The Gap. And I read this book, and I'm like, man, this is fantastic. And it talked about change. When you go through change, it, you, it creates this gap because it, it takes a lot of momentum and force to get through this change, right? Now, once you go through it, you go through, he calls this The Gap. But once you're on the other side, you look back, and you're like, okay, sweet. I, yeah. I'm past it. Yeah. The sooner you can adopt it. The more you create a gap between everybody else who's having to look at that gap. See, they're looking forward and you're looking back. And it's a lot easier to look forward and say, I don't have to go through that gap and give you that competitive advantage right now than it is. And now you can go to the next gap and start working on that while everybody else is trying to get through that last gap. I can right? imagine in five years at a conference, uh, somebody says, yeah, I, I just signed, I'm doing DVI. And they looked at him and, they look at him and says, are you kidding me? It's going to be that way. Wait a minute. You should have done this five years ago. And now it's, it's still cool. It still creates transparency. still has all the benefits. But everybody's doing it now. Right? So the gap you can create right, right now yeah, is, is immense. It's Competitive tremendous. advantage is strong today. Today. Yeah. And it probably will be for the next couple of years. You know, three to five years. And then it's going to become. And then con- everybody's going to have. Consumer demand, is going to, mm-hmm. yeah, consumer demand is going to dictate that 60 to 75 percent of the trade is doing DVI. Yeah. It, it would be mandatory yep. for every shop, just like it, just like every shop has to have a service information system right now. Right. And the That's government will probably eventually get involved, and state inspections will be digital, and, and so it's going to so it's going to be forced, right? But so now that can be created. Yeah, consumer demand will be the biggest driver, I think, and, and, and if shops shops respond to their clients. If your clients are coming in and they're going, you know, I got this, re- or my, my cousin got this really great report on their car from the guy down the street, how come you're not doing Doing this, that's what the, that's what the shops are going to get, and that's when DVI is going to become the greatest fire in the shop, right? Because a lot of shop owners are firefighters; they're constantly putting whatever the biggest fire is. I Amen. think you implement the DVI now before it becomes a fire. You prevent the fire. You make a bunch of money. Your clients are going to love you, and you don't even have to worry about it. you become an early adopter. You lead the pack. You set yourself apart from everybody else, and then the other shops in your area that are buying DVI. People are like, yeah, they learned it from that guy. They learned it from you. So be, be a leader and adopt it today. John, I'll give you the last word. Well, the bottom line, those of you on the fence, is that you need to move. We all agree with that. You need to move. But the thing is, is also understand there's a little pain in the growth. There's also going to be some steps backwards. Get your team on board. Let everybody be part of it. Have, an, have a discussion weekly, other, every other week, whatever it takes to keep that momentum going. And work with your people and show them the benefits. Let them know that, yes, there's going to be a downside. There's always this. I mean, I always use the example, the first time I pulled a trans out of an F-150 two-wheel drive, it took me two days. What's it pay? Four hours? Nice. So, so the thing is, is uh, you have to understand, you have to relearn and go through the process again. And once you get through this and you get over that hump, just like you said, over to Gap, Chris, oh, my God, it's a whole new world. And the fact is now... Hey, my buddy shop has this. Where's yours? That's going to be the other piece. It's going to happen. And, and once you get past that gap, you can worry about the next gap. Because realize there's a lot of gaps yeah. that we've got to get you know, through. You know what? That's a great point. I get love ahead it. of the fires. Yeah, I, I, the it, fires. It, yeah I, I love that. You're right. Because DVI is not the uh, final answer to anything no. that's, that, that's hitting us all, you know, DVI, constantly. DVI yeah. is the single 
biggest improvement a shop owner can do to their shop's bottom line. Yeah. There is no bigger improvement that you can do, whether you're big shop, small shop, you know, high volume shop, low volume shop. DVI is the single biggest thing you can do to impact your shop's bottom line. Thank you, guys. Hey, um, by the way, John Burkhauser was an instructor right here in this school. Yeah, it's just brought back memories coming through. Oh, right? nice. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. on. Yeah. How, how many years, you said, 10? It's just about 10 years. Wow, yeah. 10 years, instructor. Yeah, he was walking through the halls, and there was the ghost of Christmas <laughs> past. <laughs> <Yeah>. Students <laughs> past. <laughs> and this school really yeah. is the class of auto repair schools in the country. It, it's really a phenomenal facility. Carmen, I want to say, hey, thanks for putting this together. Look, you had three competitors sitting at a table, and not one punch was thrown. There's no blood. No, no blood. blood. <laughs> We're all smiling, laughing, and happy. It can happen. I'll report. And it does happen. I'll report back to the listeners if there was a cat fight at the end. I, I didn't have... see all the middle fingers being thrown I, I, will, out. I will add on to that. Is competitors really isn't the right word, because we're all pushing to put out a good product. So your good product, your good product pushes me to make my product better. I would hope I would hope that my product pushes you guys to make your product better. Absolutely. If we do that, our clients win. In the That's the reality wins. of it. Yeah, everybody industry. wins Absolutely. if, we, if yeah. we push each other to be better. Oh, cool. Everybody wins. There's 227,000 shops out there. Yeah. So there's plenty of plenty of shops for us to There's work. room. Chris Glodier, Autotex.me, John Burkhauser, Bolt on Technologies, Pete Rudloff, FlexCheck. See you guys. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Chris Clodier, John Burkhauser, and Pete Rodloff for your expert take on digital vehicle inspections and for showing our aftermarket professionals its undeniable requirement. The episode's key talking points, links to their previous episodes, and links to their companies can be found at remarkableresults.biz slash E376. Hey, have I told you lately that I'm honored to have you at the Banquet of the Spoken Word? Thanks so much for your support of these powerful, long-form audio interviews. And hey, don't forget the books page, a compilation of all books discussed on the Aftermarket's Premier Radio podcast. Go to remarkableresults.biz slash books. Have a great day, and we'll talk soon. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the Premier Automotive Aftermarket Podcast. Until next time... 